QuickBooks Online 2023 Financial Reports Generated from Bank Feed Transactions. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. You can open the two at the same time by using the incognito window or another browser to open up the sample company. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window typing into the search engine. QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it, and then do it again. Right click and then duplicate and then back to the tab to the middle, open up the financial statements and the reports on the left, one of them being the big balance sheet, the famous BS balance sheet. And then note that in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview, by the way, and then the reports on the left-hand side, that's where they're at. Let's go to the tab to the right, open up the other famous and uh, recognized report, everybody's favorite, the income statement or profit and loss it has multiple names because it's so famous and people you know generate nicknames and stuff when they get famous like reports do that too so we're going to change the range up top we're going to go from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it and then let's tab to the left and then close up the hamburger scroll up top and then change the range going from 010122 tab 123122 tab running it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time in prior presentations we have been constructing our financial statements primarily from the use of the bank feeds so if i go to the tab to the left just to note where the bank feeds are they're in the banking tab on the left banking up top so we imported this information by the way in the business view the bank feeds are in the bookkeeping and then the transactions and then the bank transactions so we imported the data from the bank feeds for multiple financial institutions, checking accounts and Visa and PayPal. You can do that with that as well. And then we used uh, the bank feed limbo to add the necessary information, which includes the account as well as the vendor and customer oftentimes to pull the information from bank feed limbo into the promised land of the financial statements, either creating or double checking what has been created in the financial statements with the financial uh, transactions. So now we want to go to the end result, what has been constructed on the financial statements and basically see if we can deconstruct, see what has been happened and, and drill back down to get a better understanding of what has been constructed and when you, you can use the bank feeds to basically create your financial statements and when you're gonna to have to use the bank feeds to double check your financial statements. So we took, took a look at this in the past with the use of a flow chart. Remember that if you're on a cash-based system, you can kind of break out that thought process as to whether you're on a cash-based system for the expenses side of things, cash outflows, and the income side of things, cash inflows at the end of the process. A lot of small businesses might be on a cash-based system, one that they can depend on, in essence, the bank feeds, to record transactions on the outflow side of things, but maybe in an industry that they still need to do something a little bit different on the inflow because they have to deal with a cash register situation or they have to invoice, meaning they have to do an accrual kind of thing on the revenue side of things. So uh, that means that the bank feeds will act a little bit differently as either something you're, you're using just to construct your books from in the simplest case, which would be great if you're in an industry where you can do that 
uh, or they'll be a little bit more complex as we've discussed if you have to do an accrual kind of component or a full service accounting system. So now let's kind of think about what has been constructed. Remember that the major two financial statements are the balance sheet and the income statement. So oftentimes when I'm entering the transactions, I'll have these two things open for the year that I'm currently working on, or you just might do it for the year to date that you're working on. You also might use the trial balance as we've discussed from time to time in the past. Let's open it up by right clicking the tab up top, duplicating it. Then we're gonna to go to the reports on the left-hand side. I usually open the trial balance by simply typing in up top, trial balance. If you use it a lot, you can save it by putting a little star next to it so that you have it in your favorite reports. It's in the accounting or for your accounting accountant <laughs> uh, group down below. And this basically, let's do a range change. 010122, 12312122, running it. This is basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement and it's much more streamlined and therefore easier to kind of drill down on sometimes easier to have one report open rather than two reports as you're doing the data input and you want to kind of double check your your numbers and drill down on what has happened all right let's go to the first tab now i'm going to switch this up a little bit so that we can see a month by month side by side report these are some of the things that you can do with the major reports balance sheet income statement you could have a summary balance sheet and you could make the balance sheet comparative balance sheets to a prior month, have multiple months in it. You could have prior quarters or multiple quarters in it. And you could do comparative balance sheet reports. So if you're doing your own reports or if you're a bookkeeper making reports for others, then you have to think about how do I wanna present these reports? You almost have like an infinite number of reports just from the financial statements once you start comparing month to month, year to year, period to period, and then do uh, multiple months or multiple periods, and then comparing to the prior year and doing difference analysis. We'll talk about that in a little bit more in a second. But for now, let's change the range. I'm gonna go from, because the data that I put in here, I think was from 080122 to 10.3122. And then I'd like to see it on a month by month breakout. So I'm gonna say month by month and then run it. So that gives us my side by side for the three months of data input. Because this is a balance sheet, this is as of a point in time. Note that if I do the same thing on the income statement, because it's a timing report, if I take this from, oh, let's take it from 080122 to 103122 and break it out on a month by month, run it, that gives us the three months and the total for those three months. Because the income statement is a performance report showing how we did over time. And the balance sheet basically is just showing us where we stand as of the end of each month, the last day of each month. So let's just go into each of these accounts now and kind of drill down on them a bit to see how they have been constructed as we've been doing the data input. Now, clearly the most complex account is the cash account. So if I go into the cash account, we're gonna have the most detail in the types of transactions in the cash account. We've got deposits, we've got expenses, we've got transfers because the cash is the lifeblood of the company. That's why we need to do the reconciliation. And obviously the bank feeds feed in directly to the cash transactions. If all your information is coming from bank feeds, then you would expect that you would just have deposits and expenses and transfers and possibly credit card transfer transactions in, in your checking account, uh, as opposed to having like sales receipts up here or receive payments in here. You can sort your cash transactions by customizing them and filtering the transactions generally, usually by type. So deposits, checks, expenses, so on. All right, so that's clearly one of the main account that we've been focusing on with the bank feeds. Now the accounts receivable, note we have something in here, but you would only have accounts receivable if you had an accrual component. So that's on the revenue side of things. If you're constructing your books from the, the checking account, you're just gonna construct with deposits, you won't have accounts receivable. If you're at a cash register, then it's a little bit different, but you still won't have accounts receivable only when you're invoicing for work that you did and you have to track uh, the receivables to have them pay you, will you have accounts receivable. Accounts receivable will go up with invoices and down, let's go, let's 10, 31, 2, 2, and down with uh, payments. Up with invoices, down with payments. Notice 
there's only basically two things you expect to be happening with the accounts receivable, that's them. There's also gonna be a sub-ledger report for accounts receivable tracking by, by customer that you're gonna have to deal with. We'll take a look at those in a second, those other reports. Inventory, also an item that's basically an accrual component. So remember, if you have inventory, you could try to stay in a cash-based system, meaning when you buy the inventory, you just wait till it hits the bank and you record it as cost of goods sold when when you have the, the expense through the bank feeds, and then you just record the revenue side when you sell the inventory. But if you have any significant amount of inventory, you're gonna have to deviate from that, put it on the books as an asset, either use a periodic inventory system or a perpetual inventory system, if you use the full inventory system, a perpetual one, then you can't really use the bank feeds. You gotta deviate from that as we've discussed in the past because you're gonna have to sell the inventory with an invoice or a sales receipt in order for it to track not only the dollar amount of inventory, but the units of inventory in a sub ledger. So then we have like investment uh, accounts. So we talked about some of the issues with recording an investment account uh, which you could wait till they clear the bank fee to record an investment in like stocks and bonds, record the interest and dividends. But to record the capital gains and losses, uh, you might have to you might have to tie that out to the bank statements and do an adjusting entry periodically. I won't go into that in a lot of detail here, but we talked about that before. And then we've got the equipment. So remember with the equipment, notice if I go into it and I change the range to 103122, we don't have a lot of activity in the equipment, such as we did in the cash account or would have in other accounts like accounts receivable if we use accounts receivable all the time on a day-to-day -day transaction because we don't buy property plants and equipment all the time. We just do it periodically. So therefore, the dollar amount is often significant, large, and it's something we need to track because we've got to put it on the books as an asset, even if we have a cash-based system because the tax code is gonna force us to do it, meaning we're deviating from the cash-based system to an accrual-based system because we have to, and we're gonna to wanna to give this information then to our tax preparer so that they can, they can uh, make the financial statements from it or make, make a depreciation schedule from it using the tax software. Oftentimes, that's how we'll set it up. Now, accounts payable, like accounts receivable, is an accrual account. So if you had a flowchart and you're just paying all of your expenses with electronic transfers or credit card payments, then you're not gonna have an accounts payable. It's only when you start to enter the bills and then track them and pay them at a later point that you would have accounts payable. Usually larger businesses start to need the accounts payable because it becomes more important to pay the bills as late as possible as the dollar amounts go up and the number of tra transactions go up because of the time value of money becoming more significant with larger dollar amounts. The credit cards like we looked at can be done with the bank feeds. So with the credit cards, you'll have similar information if you're using credit cards a lot as with the bank account, but it should be more simplistic oftentimes for many companies because the expense forms will be similar uh, to what you'd see in the checking account coming through the bank feeds but instead of decreasing a checking account or a cash account, they are increasing a liability account. And you don't really have to deal with the deposit side of things because the other side will typically be a payment, a credit card payment out of the checking account, paying off the, the uh, credit card account. So there's only gonna be those types of transactions, a lot of expense transactions for the things that you're purchasing. And then the payment of the credit card is what you would expect to see here, tying this information out, of course, to the bank feeds. And then the sales tax, remember that the sales tax always throws a wrench into the system. So if you want to use the sales tax within the QuickBooks system, then you're going to have to integrate the invoices and sales receipts because those are the things that calculate the sales tax. Otherwise, if you want to make your sales recorded with a deposit form using the bank feeds, you're going to have to manually calculate the sales tax in some way, shape or form, which we talked about in the past. Uh, loans can be, we, we saw the loans going on the books, which can be a little bit tricky. We'll see the loans go on the books if cash is affected. If we finance the equipment, it could be a little bit tricky. And then we have to deal with those amortization tables, breaking out the interest and in principal, which messes up the bank feeds a bit. 
And then down here we have the equity side of things. This is the owner's kind of claim to the assets in uh, the business because remember the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities and equity. So if this is what the company has, liabilities represent a third party that has claim to those assets, the bank oftentimes, and equity represents the owner's claims to the assets. Now the equity though, could be a little bit different depending on the type of, of organization. If it's a sole proprietor, you, you would expect to see the account that you roll stuff into called owner's equity. You might still call it retained earnings because that's, that's the account that QuickBooks often gives you. But I changed it to owner's equity because that's the name you would expect to see oftentimes. And then the opening balance equity, you might have something in there, but we should probably clean it out. I won't do it here, but it's not really professional to have something in owner's equity because it's kind of like a, a plug account for QuickBooks to, to be in balance. And the draws represents money that has been pulled out of, of the business and an owner investment would be the owner putting money into the business. Now, if this was a corporation, same kind of idea, except that the owner's equity would be called retained earnings, the earnings that have been accumulated, that have been retained, that haven't been given back to the owners or drawn out by the owners, not with the form of a draw, but in that case, in the form of dividends. Draws would be dividends. And then you'd have the uh, investment owner, the owners investing in the company would be called the capital stock. The issuance of the stock would be the investment. So the stock, that means that the value of the company has been basically cut down into to fixed units of stocks, as opposed to like a partnership, which is a little bit more complex actually oftentimes than a corporation, because then it's, you have to track the owner's equity per partner, each partner's claim, which is not always equal claim as it is like in a corporation. And therefore you have to track it in accordance with the partnership agreement and that can get fairly complex. So that's the general balance sheet on the income statement. We saw that we have the income accounts, which usually we would only uh, have a couple income accounts like service items and items for inventory uh, in, uh, income, because then we would have a sub ledger breaking out the information by customer if we wanted to, or by things that we sell service items or inventory items. However, if we're constructing our books from the bank feeds, we lose that added detail because we're not using the forms designed to provide it, that being an invoice and a sales receipt, but rather using a deposit form, which doesn't have that capacity, making it more likely that we just want to enter our income accounts by name, like who paid us, like the platforms. That's why we ended up with Amazon, Audible, blah, 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 that who, who gave us the money. And then of course, you've got your cost of goods sold, which you would only have if you, you uh, had inventory that you're dealing with, same inventory issues we talked about before. You can have a, uh, a cash-based system, but you're probably gonna need some other base system, an accrual-based system. And that means you gotta do a periodic system or a perpetual system. And then all of the other expenses, most of the expense accounts have been constructed as we made cash payments or credit card payments. And so they're usually gonna be constructed if you're building them with the bank feeds with expense type forms. So, and that's usually where you have the most accounts down here and you have the most kind of flexibility and the biggest necessity to kind of determine how you wanna group your expense accounts. Do you wanna have a lot of sub accounts? Do you want to uh, have a whole bunch of accounts or have a very limited amount of accounts and so on? And then you've got your other income uh, down below. So now let's look at some of the other reports. I'm just gonna kind of list them out quickly. I'm gonna duplicate this and just look at some of these other reports just to see how they kind of tie in. So you, you got you might be overwhelmed. You go and look at all these reports and say, well, there's a bunch of reports down here. So note the business overview reports. You got an audit log. I won't go into that in detail. A balance sheet comparison is really just a balance sheet that they have then made into a comparison report. Balance sheet detail, similar thing. Balance sheet summary is just another balance sheet, but now they've limited. They've only given you basically the the account categories instead of all the actual accounts within it standard balance sheet business snapshot gives you like a snapshot view of it i won't go into that in detail and then the profit and loss 
percent uh, of total income. It's just another format of the income statement or profit and loss. We can construct that if we want to. Profit and loss comparison, another format of the standard profit and loss. You could build that from a profit and loss report. Profit and loss detail, and then the profit and loss year to date comparison, just another comparative report. Profit and loss by class, which we would only have if we had class tracking turned on. We gave some examples of that. Profit and loss by customer, just another format of the profit and loss. You can build it from a normal profit and loss. Profit and loss by month, just another format of the normal profit and loss. You can build it from a profit and loss. Profit and loss by tag, which would only be relevant if you were using the tag feature. And then the normal profit and loss, and then profit profitability summary. I won't go into that in detail. Quarterly profit and loss summary. These are summary reports. And the statement of cash flows, that is another important report. It's going to be... And there, there, it's another financial statement report, and uh, it, it's it's you don't we don't normally open it with the the profit and loss or income statement and the balance sheet, even though it's a major financial statement report, because it's really being constructed from those other two financial statements, and it becomes more and more relevant if you're not on a cash based system, which we kind of are because we constructed our books basically from the bank feeds. Because if you're on an accrual system, then you also want to see the cash flows. So the cash flow statement kind of helps to give the best of both worlds in an accrual kind of income statement. And then the cash flows give you more of a cash flow kind of statement. So it's an important report, but I won't go into that in detail here. Who owes you? These are all going to basically be giving you more detail generally on the balance sheet account of accounts receivable, which you'll only have if you're tracking accounts receivable, if you issue invoices. So, so if you're constructing your books from the bank feeds, you won't need most of these. So accounts receivable aging, accounts receivable aging summary. So let's just take a look at it. This one gives you how outstanding the balances are. And if I put this as of, uh, let's say 103122, it also gives you this information by who owes you the money. The point is that that 91925 ties out to the 91925 on the balance sheet. So it's giving you more detail about a balance sheet report. A collections report, customer balance detail deals with the same accounts receivable, customer balance summary, same idea, invoice list. Invoices are the things that make the accounts receivable balance. Similar report, invoices and receivable payments, similar thing, open invoices. Open invoices you would think would give you the accounts receivable balance statement list terms list these are lists for uh or terms that you could put on an invoice like 30 day net 30 and so on uh unbilled charges these are charges that you had billable from an expense form or time uh, billable time that you can create an invoice from which you wouldn't be doing if you're constructing your books directly from the bank feeds typically and then we've got the sales and customers information we would expect this to be giving mainly more detail on the income item on the income statement so but it'll be less relevant oftentimes if we're constructing our books directly from the bank feeds so you got the customer contact links that's just a contact list deposit detail gives us more information kind of similar to the to the transaction detail if you just click on the deposit on the cash account on the balance sheet uh, estimates and progress invoicing only there in certain industries that you're using like a job cost system, for example. So probably not there if you're building your books from the bank statement. Estimates by customer. So these are estimate form reports, which is again, only there on industry specific things typically. Income by customer summary. So this is like an income statement, but it's by customer. So you can build that from a normal income or this is income by customer. So this is giving more detail about mainly the revenue line item, but also I think the cost of goods sold, but it won't be there uh, uh, if you if you construct your books using the bank feeds instead of making the income recording with a sales receipt or invoice. Uh, inventory detail. So obviously these reports would be summarizing the inventory. So if I open this up, inventory valuation, this gives you detail. I'm going to make this as of 103122. This this will track the inventory items. So this 250, if you were tracking on a perpetual inventory system, would tie out to what's on the balance sheet. It does not here because we put some stuff into our books 
without uh, an item. We post it to inventory without an item. But if you were doing a full perpetual inventory system, this report would give you the units of inventory tying out supporting a line item on the balance sheet, which you would only be doing if you had a bit more complex a system than constructing your books directly from the bank feeds. Payment method list, physical inventory worksheet, product and service list. This is a list of the things you sell. Sales by customer summary. So now this is gonna give you more detail about your sales line or would. So if I was to say this is gonna go from 010122 to 103122, you would think that this numbers should tie out to my sales for the year to date on the income statement, which is right here. It doesn't, of course, because we made our sales not with the sales receipts and uh, and the invoices, but we constructed our sales not using these, but with a deposit form. So even though we added the customers, it can't populate, it's not populating the customer summary because we didn't use the proper reports to do those. So we lost that detail by constructing our books from the deposit forms, which is okay but we lose some of the detail. Sales by product or service, same thing. This would give us the sales line item, not by customer, but by what we sold. We don't have that detail. That report's useless if we constructed our books from deposit forms instead of invoices and sales receipts because we don't have uh, the items in it. So let's just go down who owes you. All of these reports have to do basically with the balance sheet account of accounts payable which once again would only be there if you're on an accrual based system entering bills tracking the accounts payable. If you're constructing your books from the bank feeds, it's not gonna be there. And then expenses and, and vendors, uh, what you owe expenses and vendors, this will have to do somewhat with the expenses on the income statement. 1099s have to do with the report for 1099 report filing which you, you, you do have to kind of deal with even as a small business. Oftentimes, if you're dealing with contractors, you can go through your list of vendors and uh, check off which, which of them might be subject to 1099 reporting, and you can then issue them a 1099. Check detail, expense by vendor summary, open purchase orders we probably wouldn't have if constructing, of course, from the bank feeds. Purchase by class detail, uh, these would be more purchasing reports, tracking inventory, purchase by product, transaction list, sales tax. You would only be using these if you turned on the sales tax. If tracking the sales tax within the system, you would have to be using invoices and sales receipts rather than constructing your books just from the bank feed deposit forms. Employees would only be there if you had the uh, payroll turned on and for my accountant, some of the main reports in here are the general ledger, which, which gives you all your transaction accounts by accounts, similar to like drilling down on the accounts. The journal gives you all of your transactions basically in journal entry format, which is a great tool to practice with. And then you've got your transaction detail by date report, which is also a great report. Also just note that your trial balance is here too. Now I just want to do a quick thing with our profit and loss. I just noticed with our with our with our balance sheet and profit and loss reports, you've got this way that you can see the profit and loss by month. You can also see them side by side by quarter. You can also do a comparative report. So let's compare two periods. For example, if I wanted to go from from uh, let's say from uh, 09, 01, 22 to 10. And then I'm gonna say, I wanna compare these two by taking the previous period percentage change, dollar change. So now I just got two periods that, that I want to be comparing to, and I'm gonna change this back to total and run it. Okay, so now I've got two months that I'm basically comparing to. And so I have the difference between the two and the percentage change. That's a common report. Uh, that you would also uh, be be running, and you also the other common report that you might change this into. Uh, you can do a previous year comparison, but I'm going to take this off, and then run it again. And so there's a there's back to the normal. You also might do a percentage, uh, a percentage of the column, 
And so now this is taking a percentage, everything giving a percentage of total assets. Those are common reports on the income statement. You can do the same thing. Let's just, but let's just bring this back to the totals. But if you did that percentage column thing, then you're usually taking the percentage of income, percentage of income, and which is a, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but now you're comparing everything to total income because that's like the goal of the income statement revenue generation. So that's just a quick look at kind of like what we've constructed, a little bit of look on how you can see those reports and and a look at you know how all the other reports kind of would fit into these major financial statement reports.